What makes a good story? What makes a good adventure? Typically, we hear tall tales of some epic climb up an unclimbable peak, some journey across an uncrossable ocean. Throw a dragon in there and you've got yourself a real good larger than life story. But this is not that kind of story. This is about breaking free from the life as it once was. This is a story about a first adventure and the beginnings of a dream, one of freedom and chasing paradise. And this story starts with this man here, Cody Cirillo. An artist by trade and a skier by passion, Cody has a bit of an affinity for wooden boards on snow. In fact, he loves it more than aloe loves a sunburn. And like any snow-starved skier, Cody was a man on which the nine to five weighed heavy. But freedom still existed out there, he knew it. Maybe he could transport to a time when things were indeed a bit more simple. When the pace of life was determined by the sun and the moon, not punching in and out of the clock. The only problem was that he never had the right way to get there. See, Cody always had that dream of freedom, that vision of paradise. And this dream was one that had manifested itself on top of a faraway mountain covered in frosty spines and blower powder so deep you'd think it was a French poet. But who in the hell would have thought the key to that dream was this? What some would see as far too great an undertaking, Cody saw a long distance champ, a four-wheeled steed of friendship and gear hauling and strength, a vessel to kick the nine to five. Yes, sure, it was a bit worse for the wear, but all it needed was a person with a vision, someone with a dream. If he was a rational man, Cody probably wouldn't have bought this heat, but why let smarts get in the way of some fun? Only a few hundred miles lay between Cody, the new rig, and their unknowing and freshly crowned first mate, Kellen Wilson. Kellen, like Cody, was another snow slider with dreams of what laid beyond those northern horizons. As a matter of fact, Kellen had been chasing winter in South America at the time of this new purchase. A purchase that she wasn't upset about as she was curious to see where Cody's Visit Kellen in Chile fund had made its way off to. Still, the rig needed some love. It was time to go to work, and to work they went for a whole damn year. Some may call it a miracle, but this road veteran had transformed into a majestic, paradise-bound vessel of exploration with a peak speed limit of about 50 miles an hour. It was time to chase the steep lines and bottomless pile that they had been dreaming of since they were kids. So this crew shed the restraints of their normal lives and set their sights north. Two travelers and a bus from 1962. Nothing but the open road and powder on the mind. The plan was to keep heading straight north, but plans change. Any skier knows you don't leave powder to find powder. Word had come in that the storm of the decade was rolling in nearby. An old friend had hollered with the news. That friend was this guy, Ian Hamilton. Ian's a lightning fast, kung fu quick, big air loon. When he pops out of the snow, you just gotta stop and say, dang, look at that whirly bird go. With Ian in tow, the crew headed upwind to see what all the hubbub was about. Turns out, Ian was a man of his word. He was deep, real deep. One, two, three, four, one. You told me that you love me. 
But not strong they used to be, baby Baby, baby You told me the money I received Was nothing but just chicken feed, baby oh, baby, oh, oh, oh. baby But you are the one, the one to me And to my heart You hold the key, don't talk like that oh, This detour was supposed to be an overnight stop, but stretched from two days to ten. Bottomless snow, and I mean truly bottomless, has a way of doing that. But when the blizzard finally coughed its last snowy breath, it was time to get back on the road. Now everybody say bye to Ian. What a pal. These young travelers were told of a place at the end of the road where mountain dwellers gathered from far and wide and weary wayfarers could sleep at the base of a mountain. A ski area not stuck in a year gone by, but thriving in it. Fortune had favored the bold in Utah, so the two figured it was time to go forth once again. As the scarce winter light dwindled away, the roadside brush changed into a jungle that seemed impossibly lush and alive for a midwinter's night. The air was thick with darkness and the road had finally come to an end. Kellen and Cody figured they had arrived at their long-awaited destination. All there was left to do was wait and see. Maybe they had found the fabled mountain of their dreams. As all mornings do, this one came fast. Last night's snow still glittered in the air. And as the sun's warm embrace crept its way into the windows of the bus, Cody and Kellen were awakened by what could only be described as a damn near mirror image of the picture that had sparked this whole school bus pipe dream to begin with. This Shangri-La for vagabond souls, this Mecca for traveling homes, a true land of misfit toys. If it had wheels and a place to lay your head, it was here. Across the lot, they were met with smiles, and through the lens of a hammered old Bolex camera, they found a new friend, Micah Evangelista. Like Cody, this man had an artistic sensibility about him, and like Kellen, he was up for whatever adventure was thrown his way. They all hatched a plan to meet at the mountain. It was time to gear up and see what this place had to offer.
With the light quickly fading and some chores to attend to, the crew returned to the bus. Fire crackled in the stove, and twangs of harmonica solos and laughter glided into the night. The perfect nightcap to their day was the distant howl of a new storm blown into the valley. The weather had come in, but it had come in with a soggy vengeance, and this here roof was about as leak-free as a colander. The rig could easily withstand feet of dumping snow, but inches of rain, not so much. Water crept in through every unknown hole and seeker crack of the bus and showed no signs of slowing down. Our crew dragged their soggy selves out of their brand new waterbed with hopes that maybe rain down low meant snow up high. But they were wrong about that too. What had once been endless fields of glorious power were now rain ruts and crown lines as far as the eye could see. But at least these two had their bus, and there's plenty to do while you wait out the rain. It rained and rained until the sharp ting of raindrops became softer and lighter, until the warm glow of the setting sun streamed through the windows. The skiers began to emerge from their shelters and heard rumblings of a ceremony to pray to the snow gods. Maybe it was born out of the lunacy that comes with being hunkered down for days, or maybe there really was something to it. Either way, the thought of drying out by a bonfire was reason enough to join in. Praying for snow is a shared religion among mountain folk, an olive branch between skier and snowboarder, heck even snowshoer if they pray hard enough. More often than not, all that unified energy amounts to something magical, and with luck, it'll come in the form of snow. Now, usually paying your ski-burning alcohol-bathed respects to Uller has a pretty iffy success rate, but whatever the cause, this time it worked. Those rain-soaked fields of rutted yuck had become all but a distant memory. It was time to find Micah and see what the storm had produced. The day was a good one, but dark clouds once again formed on the horizon. Thunder echoed through the valley. 
This weather ping-ponging sure wasn't part of any paradise Helen and Cody had thought up. When it was good here, it had been great, but enough rain and brutal cold will shake anyone from a dream. It was time to press on and continue the search for their snowy nirvana. I've no too much pride. And so, with their sights set further north than north was thought to be, they pushed the pedal down and moved on. Or so they thought. If it's true that you're only allotted so much good fortune, these two were happy to have spent it. But of course, that meant that misfortune was gearing up to sock them in the kisser. And they just learned a hard lesson. When it rains, it really does pour. Suddenly it felt like the dream just wouldn't work. Maybe the search for that endless winter was indeed that. Always a search and never a reality. Maybe that winter paradise was a mirage. Maybe it had been the whole time. But dreams have both highs and lows, no matter their unfolding ratio. See, life is thickly sown with thorns, and there's no other remedy than to pass through them. It's best not to dwell. Standing still in a thicket is a good way to get stuck. And hell, scars always come with a good story. Why well, give up now? And this, now this was adventure. Calamity forces character, and if you rise to meet it, a hero's triumph. And that is a story to recall. So no, they wouldn't turn back, couldn't. In fact, they'd go even further. As skiers, the great North splendors were woven into the very fabric of their existence. If snow was falling, they'd be sure to greet it, come hell or high water. Since they hadn't seen hell yet, the water never really got that high. It was time to venture onward, so onward they went. Kellen and Cody made it as far north as they'd ever been, and they needed someone that knew their way around these Canadian mountains. So they went to the best place they could think of to find a true local to guide them. And there he was, Thomas Delfino. As Canadian looking as one could be. Just look at him, poutine in his lap, an ear flap hat, and a well-tempered appreciation of the gentleman's game of hockey. They had found their guy. Only, he wasn't Canadian at all. Je suis français. <laughs> no matter, he had the board, he had the stoke, and seemed to know the way around mountains he didn't know his way around. So the crew and their plus one loaded up, and it was on. The trio rode out the tail of the storm in the bus, toasting to good fortune. It was one for the books. Their thoughts had already begun to shift to what tomorrow had in store. Rumor was, it was going to go blue. And it did. And it was glorious. It felt like something from a dream. As a matter of fact, it was the dream. But the long journey had changed something. When you row slow and break down, time becomes your friend. 
There's no stress of arrival, no need to rush it. No way you could, even if you wanted. And the ups and the downs, well, there may be one and the same. It's all of the adventure that counts, the whole experience, the big, long chase. That glorious mountain that lived in their mind, and all it stood for, well, it wasn't really a location. It was a feeling. It was a moment. It was right now. And right now, it was time to go skiing. As the last deep turn was slashed and this paradise found, spring began to sing its song and home began to call. Our travelers had found what they had set out for and it was as glorious as they had hoped. The crew said goodbye to Thomas and set their sights back on the horizon. But this time they weren't going deeper into the unknown. This time they were going back to where this whole journey began. Home. This dream of freedom, of paradise, they thought it would be found in that land of bottomless powder and faraway mountains. But from the second they put the first nail in this tired old bus, they'd already achieved the dream. When tracking down freedom, we usually eyeball a place. It's the story we tell ourselves so we can finally put the first foot on the path. But happiness isn't an outcome. It's not a final stop. It's a byproduct of moving forward. And here we'd seen a journey spread across time and fragmented by struggle, breakdowns, and bad weather. But it was all paradise, one filled with stories, characters, and vivid memories of a time well spent. Because that dream of freedom and paradise is always out there. Only, it ain't on a map. It ain't no ski resort, no big mountain, no perfect snowstorm. It ain't one thing or one time. It's a dream you have to chase, a dream you have to live. It's a dream that's made in Voyage. Yeah, she's back, Jack, now for real. She's right by your side. 